Alright, let's do this uh, this Bow Dairy review. So I did the last video as just to kind of context on where I come as a collector, so I'm a little bit different than uh, typical affordables people. And there was uh, one watch that I forgot to mention. So this is my pride and joy for the chronographs. And it's an Omega Speedmaster split second or retropont. So we'll see the second split right here, drop, and it catches up. And we'll drop it again, just to give you guys an idea of what stop, reset, reset. Yeah, so this is my most fancy complication that I own. Now let's look at the uh, the bow dairy. So these are these are extremely interesting watches in the sense that um, on what's going on with uh, with Chinese watch manufacturing and they are getting better and uh, first we'll just have a quick look at the watch this is the, these are the, the titanium uh, automatics with the, uh, what did they say, 72, I think this one says on it, 72 hour power reserve on on uh, both of these, and the same movement, this one's uh, just skeletonized, um, and these were, what were they, like 150 US each, I think it was like less than, about 200 bucks for, for both of these, and it's a crazy, crazy deal in the sense of what uh, what you're getting for um, amount of stuff to dollar. So they also come with a full, like, their own branding package and everything. Like, it's, like, complete, you know, they're trying to, to make their own little brand of, uh, of watch, yeah, watch brand, I guess. Um... This is the, uh, I can't really zoom out here, the box in the box, you know, as I said somewhere else that it's about on par with, uh, with Tissot, what you, what do you get from, in terms of packaging, and they even come with this little, like, boutique bag, which is just kind of weird. Um, but I'll, I'll the watches, there's, oops. The watches themselves are, are interesting, like, um, a lot of this stuff was covered by uh, a lot of the other YouTubers in terms of the pros and cons. Um, it's a titanium case, and the thing with titanium is it's not, it's not the big deal that it used to be. Like, um, I'm, I work in industry, um, manufacturing industry. I was a machinist for eight years. I've worked with titanium. It's not, you know, like... 20, 30 years ago, it was like, holy cow, this is like, you know, NASA and military spacecraft, uh, aircraft and all this stuff. It's not a big deal anymore. We've, we've, we've got it figured out. It's not that expensive. There's different ways to do it now, with including um, powder metallurgy. I don't know how these are made. The, um, the finishing on them is not bad in terms of appearance. Um... But all the edges are sharp, like, like all, all, all of the, all of the corners, and I, and I refer to it as um, Lego sharp. So it's, it is basically as sharp as possible, without, you know, cutting skin and making you bleed. Um, that's what I noticed in the case. Um, as for whether they're really titanium, so that was a question on other, a lot of comments on other videos is, are they really titanium? Um, how do you know? Well, the only way that I know is kind of semi-destructive, and that involves a spark test, and I might actually do that uh, at work on one of these cases. I'll just, like, on the underside, I'll just, you just take it to a grinder, and the titanium, it sparks, like, white. Like, uh, steel is kind of an orangey spark. Titanium sparks this kind of intense white, and that's the easiest way. Um, 
you know, they, they're light enough. They're not like, like, the thing with titanium is people overstate its lightness. It's not as, uh, it's more dense than aluminum. So an aluminum watch will feel much, much lighter. Um, and it's, you know, like I said, it's not as expensive. It's not that big of a deal. Looking at the rest of these things, the, the straps are, are not bad. My general philosophy is I, I haven't bought an expensive enough watch new that I haven't changed the strap on, right? They're usually the leather straps are usually, um, you know, an embossed crocodile on a calf or cow skin or whatever. These are interesting. They're, they have this vintage look to them. Um, you know, they're not, they're not horrible. They kind of suit... Um, the non-skeleton one, you know, they have kind of a vintage looking strap. They have the Fotina loom on it. The straps, not bad. I was, uh, the funny thing, I, I was actually most impressed by the buckle quality on these things. You have a, you know, brush top, you have this, this polished chamfer and these brushed sides polished underneath. <laughs> solid tang it's not just like a bent wire um kind of a weird thing but yeah i was <laughs> i was totally impressed by the buckle um i was not impressed by that this is any you know if you know super high-end stuff um the bezel is a uh, robert dubuis homage the excalibur series um but the case itself isn't because roger dubuis uses like a triple lug set up and then this is someone as the other guy said this is um kind of a very generic sub like um mid, mid case um the bezel might not be titanium it's hard to tell it's got a good polish on there but you can um you can polish titanium to mirror i've actually personally done it but it wouldn't surprise me if they just pressed on a a steel bezel uh, hard to tell um, I'd rather avoid having uh, there might be some spots I could I could grind uh, the bezel to see if it, it has that white spark um, Fotina I don't care for but um, some of the things that are interesting is if you look at the date placement see how it's far outboard this is not, um, this is something that people criticize a lot of the Swiss brands about, or they, because they're all using basically either a, an Ada 2824 or the Salita variant or the, um, or the 2092, and they all have the same day, day placement. And then it's, it's a 25.6 millimeter movement. And when the watch sizes kind of started to get bigger, um, the date is fixed to the movement, right? Like you can't just, it's not an easy thing to, to, to just move the date. Everyone kind of seems to think it is, but you have to change the date wheel or like design of the date wheel. Uh, and these guys have taken that into account, it looks like. So you have this outboard um, date placement on a, you know, a modern size watch, which is uh, a good thing. Um, and this is going to get into, um, my, my thoughts on the movements. Um, that's like thing number one, that's like a good thing. Um, the hands themselves, um, are, you know, difficult to read, but you're not, you're not really buying these things as, as, um, you know, tool watches. They're these are these are fashion watches at their core, especially the um, skeleton. Uh, not super easy to read. Like you look at the similarity, um, how close the seconds hand is to the minute hand, in terms of like the um, like you can't see the actual hands very well. They're a dark. Uh, I'll call it anthracite. I don't know. It could be black nickel, black chrome, whatever they call it, or um, ruthenium. It's probably not ruthenium, though. Uh, plating on it. 
they are faceted though so um, you can you can see like they um, they catch the light reasonably well but you have to move to read them easily if you don't spot the um, even the hour and minute are pretty close because all you're really seeing is the little loomed portion uh, and then you have to like move your wrist like, like seeing that in the video like they all come out pretty pretty good but then they vanish right so you just you're looking for these little dots of visibility um but it's faceted and it's um like, you know the plating's interesting um yeah i don't you know these these aren't these aren't tool watches you're not going to be timing your dives with these or race cars or all the other you know myths and fantasies that go with uh, watches and, and their their purposes um the red is um, on the date is all all red. It's an interesting choice. I thought maybe when I first got it, it was red. I thought maybe it was going to be the um, like the roulette style, like red and black or whatever. But it's not. And if you look over, it's interesting. Like the hour hand kind of twitches when the date snaps over. I haven't seen that on a watch before. That's interesting. Uh, hand winds, as I showed before, it hacks. Uh, interesting movement it's a high beat and 72 hours i haven't timed the 72 hours but i like specifically but i've wound them up left them and forgot about them uh over a weekend uh not the entire weekend but i looked at them and they were like later than i have they're still running um uh, they were quite a bit different time so they were on their their last legs um I don't know what the isochronism on these is going to be, and I'm very, I'd be very curious because they're using like one big uh, uh, mainspring. Now, the thing that did interest me a lot was the uh, what I see as a as a quality improvement in the movements. Um, like this, like this is a hundred and fifty US uh, dollar watch. Movement quality is so much better than Chinese watches used to be. Um, like I had just I bought for to just to take apart with this uh, Cronin and Son, you know, with the, the you know chronograph looking thing. That's like they're just the uh, uh, date and uh, day um, uh, pointers, and it and it had a sticker. You know, it had like this weird. You know, it's supposed to look like Geneva stripes, and it was a sticker. You just peel it off. This sticker. Uh, this is like a fully, you know, that's their brand, engraved or punched or pressed or however they've done it, onto their rotor. And we're 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 seeing, you know, as I move it, you can see the angles. So you know, in in horologie, it's anglage. You know, the chamfering. And it's like classed, classed stuff, right? And here we are. We have this on the on the rotor here, including some sharp corners, which are the uh, the be all end all of of anglage for the high end stuff. Like you see, even Patek, they do that by machine, and the machines don't do the sharp inside corners. I'm, I'm looking mostly at the that sharp corner above the uh, R there. The inside corners have a small radius in them, and they beat C and C. I'm a little bit sharp there. Uh, I don't know how they did it. Um, like I said, you could like stamp this thing out maybe and get most of that. Um, there is some CNC, like there looks like some CNC chatter marks when I look up close on these things. Um, but that was the first thing that struck me. It's like, wow, there's like, you know, angles and corners and stuff. And it's like, and it's nice because it, like it catches, like you can see how it like catches the light. And it's not something that they've really done before on 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 the low end Chinese movements. The other thing is uh, the first thing, the second thing is um, the perlage, or uh, as George Daniels would say, the spotting. Um, it's not a hard thing to do, but it's just not done on low cost movements. Like it, it's um, I actually have a the specific tool so. This is the same type of tool that you'll see in Lange and Son, a Lange and Son's video of doing the perlage, right? So this is in, it's it's a specialized uh, sensitive drill, 
and it's more specialized just from an ergonomics point of view because of the repetition. So, and it's just in a drill, and then they they're just so this is spinning, and it just leaves a little, you know, just this is a an abrasive um, filled silicone bit, and it's just going pop 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 pop, and he's making these little overlapping swirlies in the metal. And then when you plate it, the um, it actually enhances the um, the plating um, enhances the uh, the little the little marks you're leaving in the metal, and you end up with uh, um, the pearlage. However, so Lange shows it done by hand. Um, if you go on to um, Peter Speakmarin's or Speakmarin's. Um, Naked watchmaker, they give a little bit of insight into how th these things are done. Most perlage is done by CNC these days. Only where it's difficult to access will they do it by hand. So you just have your movement, and the little computer goes, d -d 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 -d, does these little overlapping spots, and it looks good because it catches the light. You, you plate it, and the highs get a little bit more high with the, the way the plating works. And uh, it's just you know, has this nice effect of, of the light. There, we can see some, oops, I got my light reflection, the wrong kind of light reflection. See there, like on this top right here, you can see the, the pearlage moving around. So on the other video, he had uh, the guy, um, Just the Watch. Yeah, he does pretty good reviews, good macro shots. And he, they, uh, you can see a lot of, uh, I, I wrote a comment, a lot of schmoo on the, um, on the pallet fork. And I don't know if that's going to affect the timing or whatever, but, um, the skeleton's a little bit different. One, the skeleton, so, like, despite me saying that, yeah, this art, it's not supposed to be easy to read, the skeleton makes it even harder to read. Um, but you're not really, this is a bracelet at this point, really. Um, interesting thing is some of the jewels on the top side are non-functional. They're just there cosmetically. And I didn't look too deeply into if this skeletonization pattern is based off of Roger Dubuis or not, or off of something else. Um, but it's still interesting. So the other... Now, the next thing is getting into, into the technical aspect of it. It's like... Okay, it's a high beat movement, which usually, uh, and you know, there's an argument. Oh, high beat is five hertz now, not four hertz. Um, high beat was traditionally four hertz and higher. Um, it's common now because um, Swatch is use of ADA, but like even um, like Patek and uh, Audemars Piguet and Lange, a lot of the high end stuff is still running at three hertz, just like your Seiko 5. Um, these, these are four, so 28,800 uh, beats per hour. Uh, smoother sweep, balance wheel is just giving her right now. Um, I don't know how they've, like, it's not, it's not a clear base movement. I've got a couple other inexpensive uh, Chinese movements here and they're based off of uh, pre-existing movements one from the fake Rolex movement video just pop this thing open have a look and if you look closely at it it's um, it's based on a Miyota there's some differences. Anti-shock's different. Rotor's different. Shit. Woo. These are not 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 um, super precious. But it's based it's based on a uh, Miyota, and they do interesting things like this. It looks like a inexpensive Seiko style um, anti-shock. And then we got the Rolex-inspired rotor. 
Um, they've done some interesting things with the Chinese ones where they've taken, like, it's like a Miyota 8200 series base, and then some of them they've applied a Seiko magic lever winding system for unidirectional winding rather than the Miyota unidirectional. And this one feels unidirectional. I don't see a magic lever in it. This is another inexpensive uh, Chinese movement. And this one I think is Swiss based. Um, so uh, something the Swiss did back in the day was when Seiko was coming out with courts and kicking their ass they consolidated into these standard standard movements that they would share amongst the a, a Bosch makers. And I think this is like kind of like what um, Seagull did with the uh, their chronograph where they got the tooling of an old standard a Bosch um, movement. This one also feels like it's unidirectional hacks, hand winds. Um, but these are both these are both three hertz, where this is um, four. The balance wheel is small, which leads me to think it might be from based off of a Japanese either Miyota or Seiko or or um, SII uh, women's watch, because it's uh, the the women's movements are much smaller and. They use the um, the smaller balance wheel, so they speed it up to get it to help it maintain accuracy. So I'm like I'm kind of curious well, what these guys did because it looks like it might be a, a a mix of existing movements put into a very unique way. Like they they have it down there to give it the kind of the, the pseudo uh, tourbillon look, but um, you know it's a full balance bridge. So they've they put a balance, like full balance bridge on it, which is, you know, everyone says it's, um, you know, more secure, you know, the two points of, um, of support on it. Um, so it's got a full balance bridge, which is a nice idea. The architecture of it is actually not bad. Like the shape, like the, the look of, of it. Uh, if you look closely, I can't do it on the video, but like the main plane underneath is typical non-decorated, scratched up, and all that. Uh, the anti-shock, if you look at the anti-shock, it has that, um, that flower look of, uh, it looks like Novodayak, which is the entry, like the the less expensive uh, Swiss anti-shock. Uh, Inca, Blo Inca Block makes him, but uh, they have the the Inca Block Novodayak on the Santa Grade 2824s, and then you can option it up to the the Inca Block, which is the the liar um, the liar shape one for uh, for the the higher grade. Apparently, it's only um, ease of service difference, so it's easier for the watchmaker to service Inca Block than Novodayak, but the performance is roughly the same. And then aside from that, like if you look initially, when I see the the single screw rotor, I think uh, Miyota base, but you can actually see the um, it does have a magic lever attached to it for its um, its winding system. Where is it? So the magic lever, you can see these. Oh, it's really hard to see.